new narratives uh, pop up. You need to adjust your use cases. Um, and this is really why maybe people think Fala has changed too much, but it's not really true because the technology was always the same. Um, and what we do is that we have a blockchain and we have an off-chain compute layer powered by TE, which is the secure and the confidential part. And over the last year, we have really seen that this technology infrastructure is super important to power AI use mm -hmm. cases. AI is um, the killer use case, in my opinion, for, for blockchain. Welcome to Polkadot Insider. I'm here today with Zoe. She is the VP of Fala Network. Nice to meet you. Hello. GM. Thank GM. <laughs> Good to be here. Welcome to Singapore. Yeah. Oh, oh so do you live here? No, uh, I stand for everyone else is joining in. <laughs> I see. So I'm actually flying from another country as well. Yeah. So how about you? Me too. I came yeah. from Berlin. Oh, so I see. So I'm based uh, in Berlin at the moment. I had a smooth flight and I'm very okay. excited to be back here. Was it a long flight for you? It was, yeah. yeah. But, uh, um, yesterday? Sunday morning. I see, so. I see, I see. Mm -hmm. So I hope you have the energy for this event. I, yeah. oh, I always do, yes. <laughs> but you look great. Thank you, you. Look great. thank you. You too. So um, uh, you are the head ambassador of Polkadot. Yeah. So c can you talk to me a bit about uh, what do you do in that role? And uh, are there any challenges or what do you do to actually build a community, right? And then, yeah, yeah provide them information. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So um, I'm one head ambassador of many, right? There are 21 or at the moment 20 um, and uh, to be 21 head ambassadors elected by the dot holders, right? So the cool thing is that we have now an on-chain um, collective that is actually that runs in the back end of the Polkadot ambassador program. So I personally been an ambassador for Polkadot since over five years. Yeah, um, I took the head ambassador role also in the off-chain program. And now I'm very happy and grateful to be re-elected as a head ambassador for the on-chain collective. Um, and this is a unique mechanism that only is possible on Polkadot, right? Mm -hmm. We haven't seen this in any other blockchain or ecosystem so far, that these kind of programs um, run on-chain. And it's, it's a collective similar um, than the fellowship or the Polkadot Alliance. Um, there are several on-chain collective then there will be many more mm -hmm. that is that uh, provides the technology to run um, a group of experts in a decentralized way mm -hmm. so um, what we do there uh, we are onboarded since three months and uh, our goal is really to expand this collective to onboard also senior ambassadors ambassadors candidates and to bring the whole ambassador program on chain um, but as an head ambassador you're also because we are elected by the community and by the dot holders, we have um, different responsibilities than other ambassadors in the collective. We have a very outgoing yeah. job responsibility, right? We, we should be um, on stage, talk and educate about mm -hmm. Polkadot. And we do have um, some specific areas of expertise. My focus for the MSR program is to build and grow the AI narrative on Polkadot. I see. Right? AI is a super hot topic. It's mm -hmm. for me the killer use case for Web3 and blockchain. Super hot this year. Yeah. yeah. And um, specifically also talking about why Polkadot is the best framework um, with the best security mechanisms to mm -hmm. actually launch and do um, and build AI use cases. So we have other head ambassadors that focus on gaming. Angie, for example, we have um, great head ambassadors um, like Max, and Mario, and Lucy that focus on best relations, um, business development managed by SIX and Irina. Um, Limo focuses on open gov and governance education. So there are a very strong group of ambassadors, head ambassadors. And we um, at the moment really uh, lay out the, the design of the collective and start to work in an outgoing way before we can also grow um, the collective and the community itself. I see, I see. So um, are there any challenges on the way for uh, yeah. doing the, the role? Yes. Maybe a lot of flights for you? Sorry? Maybe a, a lot of traveling for you? Yeah, I don't see this as a, as a challenge. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not easy to travel around um, and I'm doing this for several years already, but if it's all the mindset, right? If mm -hmm. you approach it with, a, with gratitude that your job actually um, allows you to travel and allows you to, to experience different cultures and, and go to different countries, I think it's very important to always stay grateful for this opportunity um, and then just manage yourself, right? right? Yeah. Like get good sleep, do your workouts uh, to have enough energy throughout the day. I so think. the travel is not really a 
challenge. I think the challenge is the how we manage each other in decentralization in a decentralized way, mm -hmm. which we already do in in uh, with different aspects and structures within Polkadot overall with the decentralization that happened with Imperity. However, we have to manage this now in the Ambassador Collective, and um, I must say only it sounds easy, but 21 people to manage 21 people in decentralized way. This is not really easy. Um, we have to start to get to know each other, how to work with each other, how do we set up structures and processes um, while we also need to do our outgoing work and responsibilities to grow Polkadot, right? Yeah. So this is a challenge, um, but we definitely overcome it. We, we work together in a, in a great way. Um, but this is always there. How do we stay decentralized but effective? Mm -hmm. This is, this is the, the balance that we have to find. How, how to stay uh, decentralized, you were saying. So is that like, uh, is it hard to keep, like what, what's the challenge in like keeping decentralized, being de decentralized for you? Because um, everyone has a voice and a very important different opinion. Different opinions, and a different, yeah. Yes, I mean, different opinions, but everyone also uh, should get the, the room and the space to express their opinion mm -hmm. because we are all 21 leaders, right? Mm -hmm. With specific expertise, with a specific goal. Mm -hmm. But we need to find a way, how do we bring this together to actually also lay out a structure for other ambassadors to be on board, for mm -hmm. senior ambassadors, for ambassadors. So we really yeah. have to find a way how we build a collective, mm -hmm. but also to come to a, where we need to come to an as agreement a voice. as a, you're right as one voice but then everyone has their own opinion and their own goal so this is very exciting and um, it's really 21 leaders in one room that discuss but also need to be respectfully make these decisions then understand so uh, let's talk about um, Fala network yeah yeah so uh, Fala network focus on data and AI uh, for this year right yeah so uh, how has it been for Fala already yeah, Fala is a parachain on Polkadot and Kusama. Sure. We rebranded um, what the narrative now is a TEE-based co-processor for AI. Mm -hmm. um, TEE are the trusted execution environments, which is a specific cryptographic mechanism um, powered by hardware in comparison to on-chain software mechanisms. And um, But Fala has been around for, for several years. I mean, we started to build Fala in 2018. Our co-founders, Hang and Marvin, are also here in Singapore, and very happy to connect with you guys if you're around. But um, Fala's underlying technology was always a confidential compute um, based on trusted execution environments. Mm -hmm. This is what has never changed. Uh, we just like did a lot of adjustments or um, and also strategy changes to find the best product market fit, mm -hmm. right? Which is in Web3 very important and it always takes a t time because new narratives uh, uh, pop up. You need to adjust your use cases um, and this is really why maybe people think Fala has changed too much, but it's not really true because the technology was always the same. Um, and what we do is that we have a blockchain and we have an off-chain compute layer powered by TE, which is the secure and the confidential part. And over the last year, we have really seen that this technology infrastructure is super important to power AI use mm -hmm. cases. AI is um, the killer use case, in my opinion, for, for blockchain, but Traditionally, it's run off chain and everything is in a black box and you can't verify AI and the models are not open and you can't also like train or verify that the agent being mm -hmm. run on this model is verified. So we, with our technology at Fala, can really empower the AI tech stack to make it decentralized, to run it on a decentralized cloud with over 30,000 nodes that run by the community, wow. but are actually verified with trusted execution mm -hmm. methods. So this is what I'm super excited about. And I'm really happy that we finally found this case, this use case for Fale with close um, over uh, yeah, many um, over a dozen of partnerships in the last month where um, builders come to us that have that build AI agents, that have LLMs or um, data sets that they want to verify on our cloud. So we have also really see the, the incoming traction, which is great. So uh, tell me about the best features of Fala. Yeah, because uh, you were saying that uh, for this year, you guys are like uh, changing a bit and people said you guys are changing like a little bit too much and you're going for the AI way, right? AI uh, always goes with 
securities, right? There's yeah. always like a problems in it, and then yeah. you guys are solving it, right? Yes. So is that the best feature for a uh, Fala right now that you guys want to promote for to everyone? Yes, exactly. Yeah. This is actually what we always provide a confidential compute layer, right, mm -hmm. or confidential execution layer for Web3. Um, so the killer feature is really the security and verifiability that you get on a decentralized cloud like mm -hmm. Fala. Um, and the use case really for AI is here that, um, that we merge Web2 web with Web3 use cases. So um, AI security is, mm -hmm. is, is hot this year. How do you guys foresee the trends and how, how do you think, what are your thoughts on, the, uh, on AI? The security is very hot because we need to finally, um, I mean, because AI is coming to Web3, right? We yeah. also have to find a way um, how to secure. And um, keep it sustainable and keep it in a way yeah, yeah sustainable but i mean this is why ai uh, use cases are coming to web3 because we want to really go into the whole tech stack right and if you start uh, from top and from the top down um, we have of course different applications the two main use cases for ai and web3 trading boards or um many trading box for 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 example where you can implement an agent mm -hmm. right uh, then you have agents that need to be verified or also Agents. hosted decentralized. Then you have these AI models, uh, the training sets that should be also hosted, open source and verifiable. And then on the lower tech level, you have the compute, which is uh, based on CPU power for the agents or verifiable GPU to run inference or the models that these agents are trained on. So this is um, the tech stack that we are looking at at the moment and where the security part comes in is really on the, on the compute layer. And this is where Fala is, is the leader because we have over 30,000 decentralized nodes that run on TE, um, which we now also can verify on GPU. Wow. So this is actually a big, um, a big innovation. We just released a benchmark on GPU TE verification that we distributed happy to share the links uh, afterwards, which means that um, we can also finally run inference and um, training models mm -hmm. on GPU because they need GPU rather than CPU, but verified with trusted execution moments. Um, and this is a big step. So Fala's cloud um, is mainly CPU power. And now we start to work with big partners like Ionet, Alora, but therefore for the inference side, um, Athia, like really uh, Web3 clouds that are strong on the GPU side to provide hardware like H100, H200. This is like GPU TE um, enabled hardware where we can now um, put on uh, TE verification. So this is something super innovative for the space and to really enhance uh, the AI use cases. Well, it's also like a breakthrough for Fala. Yes, yeah, so definitely. Congrats on the milestone as well. Kudos to the whole yeah. team, definitely. Yeah. And uh, for the upcoming plans for Fala. Yeah, uh, can you share a little bit? Maybe I, we are like at the end of the year already. Yeah. And then uh, upcoming twenty, and then upcoming twenty twenty five. So yeah, a any upcoming or nearby plans for Fala? Yeah. So for now, really uh, pushing on the GPU TE verification mm -hmm. and to really um, get more more partnerships and and uh, use cases created. There will be the time to get absorbs everything. Yeah, I mean, yeah. first of all, build out our GPU mm -hmm. um, cloud, right? With strong partners that already have this hardware. Mm -hmm. So because we are very strong on the CPU TE verification, now we want to provide this offer, but um, already jo also join forces with already existing Web3 GPU clouds sure. where we can bring the TE verification onto. Um, and then I think when, when this is uh, laid out, uh, we can really offer the service uh, much more. We already offer the service from the CPU side. Uh, we do have a new project also um, that's called Red Pill, which is launched. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you want to interview Marvin on this okay, uh, okay. As, a, as an expert. And um, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> great. I mean, we're looking forward to see uh, all the great parts of Fala's coming. Yeah. Um, it's been great talking to you. Thank yeah. you. So uh, I hope that we can have another chat in the future. Yeah, yeah, I would love to. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.